thank you to those who came on. Bear with me. Um, I guess we're not going live on podcast today. Okay. Oh, look at that. We there. We live on Facebook, y'all. Yeah? All right. Um, thank y'all for joining me. Um, to the audience, I'm, I'm a little nervous, y'all. Uh, I am Tasha Phoenix. I'm with Evolve. Um, and that is the acronym for Elevating Voices of Leaders Vying for Equity. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, again, I am with Evolve. I am the co-director, um, the director of Food Justice Organizing. Um, and today I have with me an uh, urban farmer um, and owner um, of, you have, to, you have to help me, Tiffany. Um, is Dobbin Cove, Dobbin Cove Garden Farm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, she, Tiffany Washington, she's from Texas, uh, Austin, Texas, right? Yeah, but Austin, is, Texas. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> is that where you originally from, Austin, Texas? I, it is. I'm originally from Austin, Texas. Hold on one second. I'm going to uh, share this <clears throat> on my live real quick so we can get it going. And I'm, okay. All right, and I'm so, gonna... so. Okay, okay gonna record this all right so yes i am originally from austin texas i was born and raised here um i can't even tell you how many generations of texan i am at this point uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so i'm real deep you can kind of consider me a kind of like family historian um i love history i grew up just in the history and stuff like that um so yeah when it comes to like genealogy and farming and agricultural history that's just you know something that I like to do but born and raised right here yeah yeah so yeah um man so I think we met at a conference right yeah so we met at the uh the National Young Farmers Coalition Conference it was online it was on Hoover the Hoover app (laughs) and they got a bunch of apps now (laughs) <laughs> yeah it was cool though you know what i'm saying it was pretty dope how they set it up <clears throat> and how everything worked so uh i was excited about it. i see y'all popping in here hey y'all hey <laughs> <laughs> thank y'all um thank y'all for tuning in um again this is an uh, interview uh with tiffany washington urban farmer uh from austin texas um, we're just going to get into some of the activist work she does as a farmer in Texas, but um, it being the eve of Juneteenth, man, Ooh. which is now a national holiday, um, we want to get into what Juneteenth means to Black Texans. Um, for those <laughs> who don't know, uh, Juneteenth is a holiday that originated in Texas yeah. um, that revolves around yeah. the um, emancipation of slaves um in america and how the texans black texans found out about it two years after the emancipation happened (laughs) um so we're gonna get into it um what juneteenth means for black texans um and what does it mean to black farmers um and 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 we're gonna touch on this capitalization of juneteenth man Man, so, so um, yeah, I'm gonna let you go. I ahead. had um, so I had sent you a slide, a presentation <laughs> because if anybody knows anything about Farmer Nancy, that's what they call me, y'all. Nancy Farm Fancy. If anything, know anybody know anything about me? I'm coming with receipts. I'm coming with documentation, and I suggest everybody else do the same. Go down to your local library, hook up with some archivists, researchers, and get the tea. So <laughs> my slides, you know, mm-hmm. is the tea. So um Question we can get into the slides. Yeah. Can you explain um the importance and, and the necessity of us having documentation of history of uh, why it's important to know our <laughs> history um in 2021? So Right now, it is very important to have documentation because these are the receipts y'all owe us and you got to pay up. 
And with the way everything is going right now today, I want my money and I need it now. So <laughs> <laughs> listen, <laughs> so I'm yeah. coming with paperwork and cause, cause that's the thing, right? So as a farmer, and we'll, we're going to tie all this in together. Um, as a farmer and owning an agricultural business, you know, they expect me to come with my paperwork. You know, they want to see my certifications. They they be want to even see where I learned it at, you know, but. Major. But for me, but for me, you have to put yourself on mute. But for me, um, it's kind of like. I've always just kind of, sorry, that's one of the things I do. I forget. Didn't we just talk about this? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> let me chime in. Also, she's a veteran. Um, so she's a veteran. And so we, before the live stream started, um, we talked a little bit about um, being in the military. And, and let me know if you mind me sharing this. Um, but, um, yeah. yeah, you know, having PTSD um, and that she, just um she has to always be reminded um so <laughs> i mean well it has to have a um alarm clock i told her i look i have six 60 alarms going off <laughs> um so yes, i have to be reminded because it's so easy for me to forget things sometimes and, and like my short term memory like in a second i can forget like what i'm saying or where i was going with something or whatever so you know i mm-hmm. have to push through that but um yeah. Just chime in again on what I was saying to you mm-hmm. before we kind of went off. Sure. So you were talking about um, just the receipts and um, of course said, I need my money. I need it now. And just having. Yeah. Re- oh, OK. So, yeah, that's what I was saying. They always want us as business owners to bring them our documentation. But you ain't show me no documentation. You haven't showed me that you even qualified to be talking to me about this right now. So here, let me bring you this other documentation that says that you owe me because you've been telling me you sorry for racism, you sorry for this, you sorry for white supremacy. I don't want to hear that no more. We're, we're past that. At this point, I need to be compensated so that I can help change my community. And this is why I'm telling you after this conversation, I might have to be offline <laughs> <laughs> Man, for, for a couple of days, but it's Juneteenth. Let, this is this is what it's Juneteenth, Juneteenth means. It's Juneteenth, and this is what Juneteenth mean, means to me individually as a Texan, not only a Texan, but a Black woman that is born and raised in the capital of the state of Texas. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I think about this and I see what's going on with Juneteenth, I feel some kind of way. You know what I'm saying? So I'm getting chills, but I'm I'm just gonna bring y'all what's real. You know what I'm saying? This is this is coming from just Texas. What it means to Texas. Right. So happy Juneteenth. <laughs> now you want me you to share you. that. You want me to share you? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, or you can share. I can share. Um, I can share because then I can kind of go through some of the links and stuff. Um, and then I can definitely, we can email this to you guys who want to get a copy of it. So you guys have access to the links to or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. It says that the host disabled participant screen sharing. That's not host. Um, uh, let's, let's get you. Go ahead. Try it again now. I just changed it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Have you, yep. Okay. This is what we want to share. So this is it, y'all. Let me present this. So I first want to definitely just start off by saying I'm giving a special thanks. When we got in here, I started telling you about, you know, those people you can go to in your community when it comes to learning about your local history. One of the things that we have to start doing as a people is know our history, but you need to know your local history. Like my local history is not the same as your local history in St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? I want to know about that, but I had to learn about my local history first. So we have to stop being way up here doing the work and we have to be on the ground and moving, moving forward. You know, that's, that's just how I see it in the way I do my work. So with that being said, you know, I go out into the community and I find those people who can really help me. So this is definitely a special thanks to Miss Tanya Du Bois, 
um, from Houston. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna click through to her links here. Um, and she is a powerhouse, okay, y'all, when it comes to genealogy and ancestry and history. Um, mm -hmm. She is no joke, she's from Houston, Texas, and she does projects in Black Heritage out in Independence Heights. And this is just, you guys can go check her out, all the information here, so much information. You know, and it's the same for you guys. There's there's a powerhouse woman in your community who has all of the details that you should connect with. And then I would also like to thank a close friend and librarian, um, Kimberly Keaton. She's at the Austin History Center. She's an African-American archivist, genealogist, historian. This my homie. <laughs> um, <laughs> So she has, you know, known as the Black Community Archivist, and she actually did a lecture called The Black Farmer Falls, a retrospective look at African-American farming in Austin, Texas from the 1800s to the present. Um, and like I said, we're going to tie this all into Juneteenth and everything, but Kim is also a powerhouse, um, and she's like literally the only Black librarian I knew, <laughs> like, you know, you don't see that anymore today. So when we talk about our little girls having somebody to look to and want to read and stuff like that, these women are out here. Um, she has this. Let me see if we can go back. Why are you looking for it? I wanted to chime in. You're absolutely right about um, historical. I, I guess I guess that's why we click so much. Like I'm doing my family genealogy right now. And um, in doing genealogy, in doing that genealogy, of course, finding local history in St. Louis, um, just a plug in for not only do we have um, uh, African American History Museum that's right in the city on St. Louis Avenue, literally about a hundred steps up from that African American History Museum is a, is the, the St. Louis African American History Museum. A uh, brother Calvin, I want to say Riley. Um, has so much documentations, right, of just like the St. Louis history, um, and which I laugh all the time and say, for every national movement we've had, St. Louis has always done his own thing. <laughs> um, so yep. look at all these national movements. And then I, I went to, and I was asking the question, well, where was our Black Panther Party? And where was, well, we had this. <laughs> and I said, man, we right. always do our own thing. Absolutely. Please mute yourself. Thank and you, that's kind of how it goes, right? So um, yeah. these ladies, you know, I'm just, and I tell everybody, you know, I'm just your local farmer. You know, I'm not this huge scholar. We get together and we have all these people that use all this language and scholarship upon us. And I'm just like, man, whatever happened is just talking to me. Like, what are you, what are you saying? You know, just get it out. But we, <laughs> now we have to be bogged down with all this data and research when we already know what's going on you know so if we're going to talk about it let's just talk about it so I hope that you know I've been taking the information that I've been gaining and uh learning and you know researching and stuff and using it to make these wonderful women proud so <laughs> what I want to do um <laughs> definitely how you talked about the local St. Louis history centers and archives we have that in Austin too um so when we talk about Juneteenth, I want to just kind of play a little video to show how Austin, you know, looked at Juneteenth. This, this was last year. No, this was seven years ago. So I don't know if y'all can hear it. Hold on one second. Looked at Juneteenth. This, this was last year. Okay. No, this was seven years. So I don't know if y'all can hear it. That, Hold on one second. Is that me? Look at Juneteenth. This this was last year. Okay. No, this was seven years. Oh, I don't think. So can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. I'm gonna mute my mic. Okay, I don't think. I don't think I can play the audio. I might have to, oh man, let me see. 
you okay so i might have to let you share on the parts to play the video so we can hear the audio or can like you like move on my screen too we getting the technology part together y'all we farmers <laughs> we got this <laughs> all right so just yeah just go back and then just yeah play the youtube oh we want some sound All right, I think I might just maybe have to narrate what the video is showing and we can do that if they want to. Okay, so this is a video from the Austin History Center. It was posted by KUT Austin, which is basically a local news station. So they went to the Austin History Center and they did this little, you know, segment on black people in Austin and how they actually were a part and active in like the voter rolls and getting together and they were interested in participating within our local politics and civil rights they were can we consider ourselves communities Clarksville is actually a free men's community in Austin Texas so we had this collective of black people who were actively involved in our freedom um, and then they did this little bitty piece on Juneteenth. It was kind of like Juneteenth just was about community, you know, things that are changing. And it was just like this, you know, one place for all us to get together and celebrate. And that was it. You know, it was just this small little piece of information. It was really weird, you know. So when we talk about emancipation, we know what that is, right? It was the Emancipation Proclamation, Proclamation 95, you know, President Lincoln declared all the slaves free, January 1st, 1863, slaves are free. This is, this is what it is. This is what happened. The words, it's out there, you know? So more documentation, Proclamation of the President of the United States, all slaves see don't write stuff down if you don't want me to go back and look it up all slaves in all states and sections in the rebellion declared free you know this is what the this is what the president recommends the blacks to do so we even had recommendations on what we should do now that we were free they created the free men's bureau the free men's bureau it's just like what you see today. You know, they give us something, then they create something where we go get the information, where we use the resource. The Freedmen's Bureau, during the Reconstruction period after the American Civil War, popular name for the Bureau of Refugees, we were considered refugees, you know. <clears throat> it was for them to provide us practical aid to over 4 million newly freed African-Americans in their transition from slavery to freedom. You see the, the sign, like, look at this. The Freedmen's Bureau, an agency to keep the Negro 
in idleness at the expense of the white white man that's messed up so that's that's what the people considered it you know they they was just like we're gonna take care of you but that didn't make sense because we were already taking care of ourselves as families can we you know can we go back once i want to ask a question um yeah go ahead because it says twice vetoed by the president um and made a law by congress so the notion that lincoln wanted us to be free wasn't a fact you know you learn in elementary school oh lincoln wanted to be free i think when i was in maybe fourth grade i i read we read the proclamation um the emancipation proclamation i was like well he didn't care if we were free or not and so yeah our children get this history that that he wanted us to be free when no he wanted to keep the states together um but right. it's the accurate history that he was trying to free us he was trying to do the best thing to keep um the south from succeeding um from uh the rest of the country and so financially like, financially yeah, like absolutely. it's big money it's big money in agriculture and they up north sitting and in the ac labor. in the offices you know what I'm saying? They cooling. They got on their ties. We down here work, slaving, getting in, getting them paid. So it's like you. Oh my god. So uh, you really have to look at this from a perspective of what were my people doing? Not all of us, but what was my family doing during this time? You know, I, I can't imagine what one of my great great grandparents felt when they saw this flyer like you know what i'm saying that's a that's a trip to me so no it was it was all financial you know to me when you look at it the civil war was you know white brothers fighting each other over black people you know and how they was gonna keep money in their pockets and surviving you know what i'm saying like it just it was crazy you know but it happened and so happening today yeah, it's happening today. He was just like, well, this is what we got to do to make sure we we do a shift and change. This is how it got to happen. And so he signed it and the word needed to get out, you know? Absolutely. So you, everybody knows the word didn't just spread. It just, you know, there was no social media. There was no, you know, this word had to get out. So on June 19, 1865, nearly 200,000 men, women, and children enslaved in Texas learned of their emancipation two and a half years after Lincoln had issued the proclamation terminating slavery in states rebelling against the Union. So yes, in Texas, yes, we did not, our family did not, families didn't have that knowledge. It was kept from us purposely for financial gain like that's just what it was you know there were a lot of white slaveholders who started to lose money who started to go broke when this happened here's a and when we talk about looking at the celebrations y'all this is a photo from the austin history center a juneteenth celebration in austin texas in 1900 you know what i'm saying so we've been celebrating we've been out here happy that we was free on june 19th Absolutely. what you mean <laughs> like yeah so <laughs> where's can, can i chime in real quick yeah definitely so like i think that one of the questions and that were people who are critical of it becoming a national holiday is this is a holiday that freed us from being slaves and to look at it and and have it a national holiday it's it's more than a day off work it's 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 a it's a legacy and a history um and so like i think my question is actually how how does it how do people feel with basic your oppressors um being the ones one that gave you this holiday um i mean they gave made it a national holiday but now partaking in the 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 idea of Juneteenth when we're having so many problems in 2021. I call these people weapons of mass distraction. So <laughs> I think that's a perfect terminology. <laughs> because because I can't see here, you know, and because it's too much. It's it's we gotta talk about this. Like right now in Texas, we having rolling blackouts, floods. We just went through a winter storm, messed up our whole grid. It's hot. 
We don't know if the grid going down. They telling us to put our ACs on 78, 85 when you're not at home. Like, no, what are y'all talking about? It's going down here. But we celebrating Juneteenth. You right. We definitely right here in Texas. We definitely going to celebrate Juneteenth. It's going to be popping on Saturday. Rosewood Park. Like, <laughs> it's going down. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, to have to have it finally recognized is is amazing because we have to hold them accountable for that. What are we recognizing? We recognizing this history of what these Texans had to go through and what their families had to go through in other places to get to them. You know what I'm saying? Because this is for all of us. You know what I'm saying? I we was all finally free. Everybody. Like man like could you imagine like I have to put this in like regular you know sometimes because I'm a storyteller and so I have to kind of put it in terms like you know we all know we you could you imagine I'm on the plant that plantation and I'm hot it's hot out here and you my kinfolk you come down from wherever up north and you've been like, girl, I've been trying to reach you. I'm shocked because I ain't seen you in years. They didn't been sold your mama them. But you back here in Austin to tell me that I'm free. I'm like, I'm free since when? Girl, it took me a year to get here. What? So I've been free for a year. Imagine the emotion that I feel. Not just that I'm free, but that you free and you came to get me. Like, like now what we finna do um, you know what i'm saying so we have to really stop playing like people didn't have stories like our elders ain't sit down at the fireplace at the table around the food that they was out in the back picking to tell us what they went through somebody passed along those stories and a lot of us still have those stories we're living in the experience so mm-hmm. when i say all this and, and it, the problem is all the scholarship. The problem is all these people who want to take this simple information that I can go to, the, to my local librarian or my local history center and start looking into my own family's history. That's going to turn me on to my, my cousin's daddy mem side history. And, and that's going to make my family interested over there. So now we all looking at how this was a, a neighborhood of families and loved ones that became free and had to protect themselves from people lynching them killing them you know that moves look i made slides for us y'all <laughs> more, more pictures leading to so you know we free now you just came and got me and said that but boom here they come with the code Black codes, 1866, they were strict in the rights of African-Americans. We couldn't really talk in public. That's why Black people have problems with communication right now. Because since, since, the, since, the <laughs> since the time we could talk to each other freely, we couldn't even do it out loud in public. What you mean? No, that's a problem. Talking in code, talking in, code in public, that's what I call it. It's a problem, you know, mm-hmm. having access, you know, and what did they do? They forced us back to the rural areas is what agricultural labors go back over there, be them livestock farmers, them farmers go pick our what our food, because if y'all don't do it, ain't nobody gonna do it, we're gonna starve to death. No, that's that's not cool, you know the political legal systems were used to regulate our behavior you know and this happened everywhere it happened everywhere but in texas in austin in texas this was this was bad because y'all have to look at first of all stephen and faustin brought all these people of um suspicious character i'm trying to use nice language (laughs) <laughs> he brought all these people you know you know <laughs> kind artists right. people that wanted to continue to participate in slavery that didn't want right. to abide by the law so he brought criminals with him to texas did a deal wow. scamming on the mexicans now we got texas and he mm-hmm. said austin texas it ain't gonna make it without 
slavery and cotton picking and agriculture. We're mm. gonna die. So mm. since the inception of Texas and Austin, Texas, agriculture and farming has been a pillar of the foundation because they had to eat. And, and the slaves they brought with them was the good kind of farmers, the one know how to grow the good spinach and the good food, know how to do, <laughs> you know, they was like, come on, y'all. They brought them from, they brought families from all over Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, oh, wow. Kentucky. You know, my, I have my cabinet from, from Missouri. They brought families that no longer <laughs> wanted. They was like, we not letting go of our slaves. We going to Texas. So they came here, wow. you know? So at the nation, <laughs> when they didn't want to let their slaves go, they would just go to Texas. Wow. Wow. Man. You know, it's like, <laughs> They and they wasn't supposed to. That the Mexicans made they made a, a pact with Mexico. You know, no, no mm -hmm. slaves. You cannot bring your slaves. This is the Mexican American War. Mm. Uh, Mexican War. You can't bring slaves here. You gotta stay for ten years. You gotta speak Spanish, and you have to uh mm. convert to Catholicism. Wow. Those was the four terms. Wow. And they said, all right, we're going to do that. They came with the slaves. They came, <laughs> Stephen and Moses, was, they came with them. You know what I'm saying? And that was a problem. It was such a big enough problem that it was a war that was fought over, over this great state. So, you know, we have to put Juneteenth into perspective. We cannot allow Absolutely. these people to take this holiday that's rooted in so much documented history that matters these are the receipts that says y'all wronged us and you have to pay you have to compensate us for those hardships how 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 are we going to fix this black farmers we need land we need access to land see i don't have to go to to washington because like me and you know it's groups of black farmers that do that so they got that Absolutely. i got this I, I wanna, <laughs> while we, let me let me do a plug because i'm on the leadership team shout out to the um, national black food and justice alliance um yeah. and all the work they're doing on behalf of black farmers for um, real doing it for a while um and others who are out fighting on behalf of black farmers um kudos and heads off um and this has been a long fight um and and we just continuing on with it um so yeah thank you for the history thank you um i don't i want to i want to say room for questions to see if any in the audience so i'm gonna let you go ahead and um finish your presentation so yeah they can ask we definitely got uh it's just quick stuff now because mm -hmm. we just kind of get into it um the Emancipation and Trail Act, I don't know if anybody knew about this, January 27, 2020, they passed a bill for the Emancipation Trail that goes from Reedy Chapel, Galveston to um, um, Independence Heights, uh, no, to Freemanstown and Independence Heights and Emancipation Park in Houston. So this was the second trail that the U.S. Uh, government <clears throat> focused in with African-American history. And it, uh, the first one is in Alabama, but this trail um, showed how the newly freed slaves migrated and the routes that they took, okay? Um, and you know, we all talk about how General Granger came and was like, yeah, y'all are free. So the word spread, and this was along the trail. Um, so now we got these, you know, Juneteenth, 2021, here we are. Senate passes the bill, it's a federal holiday. People is in their feelings. They they feel like we being gaslighted. They got their own opinions on what needs to be happening, who needs to be taking care of what, you know. But for us, me as a historian, I feel like it's the proper opportunity. Or as a, you know, I don't want to call myself that because some people take their titles very seriously, y'all. So as a person who indulges and loves history, <laughs> uh, you, you hey, take your title. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I definitely am with them because right now people are gonna want to be invested. Okay, the white people, 
y'all want to be a part and, you know, be all on board and, you know, take off on Juneteenth or whatever, you know, y'all need to learn what it means to us. Y'all need to learn the history. So y'all need to come to me. Y'all need to come to our Black spaces, our Black farmers, our Black restaurants, our Black construction workers, everybody, all of us, y'all got to come and learn about what our skills that were passed down, the Black locksmiths, Black everybody, all of them. It was so, it's so much. And they need to start opening up about their family heritage and their family stories and what brought, molded those communities together to be long lasting communities because they have to outlet last like kkk initial listen 1865 you was free 1866 he was still pissed off well i need i need my slaves back i can't do nothing that didn't change in a year that didn't change in two years three years they was grieving the loss of their slaves like what are y'all like we gotta stop having i want to <laughs> I want to chime in is grieving the loss of their slaves and they got restitution for losing their slave. They got, which is insanity, you know, and still, uh, and still wasn't, and still wasn't happy, still wasn't happy because they created systems like housing projects to keep them really close. Cause they didn't know where to go. They was refugees. Mm -hmm. They didn't know where to go. So they built housing right close to them. Then they just walk across the street and keep farming because they really don't got no job still. So they got it. Then they got tenant and sharecroppers. Like, you mm. know, it's, it is, we, I refuse, I refuse to allow stuff like this to happen. And the people around me aren't able to gain this knowledge just like I can to share with a white person or anybody that steps to them and be like, yeah, and bring this up. Oh, well, man, you know, shoot they gotta still pay me for you know what i'm saying my people trauma <laughs> so you know wanna, what i'm saying i want to chime in i want to first give the audience a chance to ask any questions let me go on facebook to see if there's any questions um that anyone might have then i got a question of my own um yeah kamina said she's just saying pay up nine million that's all. <laughs> Not me. I'm with Camino on that one. Um, I got, so my question is what so like what should black Americans outside of Texas take from what you're saying? What should we do to actively learn more? Because I think there is a notion that we we all know what Juneteenth is. And a lot of us no. don't know what Juneteenth is. This is something hey. new for the rest of black America. And you know what? It trips me out, right? Because I asked my husband, I was like, Bay, y'all see, remember I said he was from New Orleans. I said, Bay, y'all yeah. celebrated, y'all celebrated Juneteenth. He was like, No, I ain't know what that was till I came here. <laughs> wow. In 2005 after Katrina. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I told him, I don't think it's okay that we be second lining in other places because that's something that goes on in New Orleans. So, I don't know. It's like, don't culturally appropriate me. You know what I'm saying? We black, but just hold on. Learn the history because somewhere in there, the history is also a part of your history. So I also had saw last year, there was this panel and they was talking about it. And it like the way they talked about it made it seem like Texans are lying or we don't know our history or like we tripping about what Juneteenth really is like that's not cool you know what I'm saying because I've been celebrating Juneteenth since I came out my mama she took me wrapped up down the rosewood in the heat for uh Juneteenth you know mm -hmm. so you gotta really know what you're talking about so what I would suggest is learn the history of Juneteenth locally like what was going on like were the local blacks there talking about it you know what because everything is a timeline nothing happens just right up. stuff is happening right you know this happened in austin on this day june 19 1865 what was happening in st louis on that same day yeah, that's uh, important. So, like, I don't know the earliest history of celebration of Juneteenth, but um, organization Sabaye has been the longest um, 
organization, to my knowledge, that has celebrated Juneteenth before it was popular, before it was popular with Black people. Um, you know, that was the side by for the conscious community here. So a lot of like you see a lot of things, and they got the the, the term. I ain't gonna say it. But you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna say you know the term, term. But like a lot of conscious people, when when Juneteenth wasn't popular, they knew what it was. They celebrated, celebrated it, and and so like, um, you know, now that it's so popular with white America, um, you 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 see this this trend happening of celebrating Juneteenth. But yeah, my my, my thing with Juneteenth and always knowing what it is and the, the 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 whole history behind it is that what I always say it ties into agriculture it ties into our history of farming here and how we can't there is nothing in our history that does not tie into at the base of it, agriculture and food food justice right and so right. Like, that is that's that's my thing on when we talk about what Juneteenth is, what it means for Black America, but most importantly, what does it mean to Black America in the scope of um, Black farmers, right? So, yeah. Right. So, in the scope of in the scope of Black farmers, when you look at Juneteenth, a lot of the farmers were able to come together and pull. So, what's playing in our background is the 1976 Juneteenth celebration here in Austin. Um, and I'm gonna just flip through them as we finish up and everything. Who's the but, brother? Um, you know, I don't know, and it didn't say uh mm-hmm. uh Reverend Williams. I'm gonna have to look it up. Okay. I was just able to grab it off the thing. But um, when we talk about being free and creating free men's communities and stuff like that in order to be able to sustain any type of community you have to be able to sustain your life your health your you know your wellness and so you have to be able to eat now we was already the producers of the food that everybody was eating so now that we have our own land and our own communities and our own towns we continue that work in order to feed each other in the community whoever was inside that community you know it was no going to the gross listen wasn't no going to the grocery store on the other side of 35 in 1868 to try to shop and get produce or whatnot no nah, you had to do that right here so it had to go from the farmer to the to the grocer so we had those those people we had those to the meat market or fish market or wherever you know there was a food we had our own food system in mm-hmm. all in those black freedmen communities and so once can i that it was yeah i, I want to add because you said some so important you said we had our own systems right and when yeah. you think of black wall street um and you know the history of that and and the that they were sharecroppers they were farmers they bartered with each other right and in bordering the first store that they opened up when they at the bordering with each other was a grocery store. Um, so I think that like when you said that system, it's important for us the when you and you talk about academia and and those of those who are lettered who take these things and now and think that this is um oh a you have to be already financially set to do this. No, you don't. You have to have a need in the community and build from what? that. And that's what it was. And, and, and what if we had a candy lady? You in St. Louis? You grew up, you know, you got the candy lady, you know what I'm saying? She got the push, she got the push pops, the juices. What you talking about? The corner store. We going right. up the street. The to Miss Lisa house. Hey. You gonna get some frozen cups. She gonna make us some chili cheese fries and everything. I got a dollar. Hey, break some <laughs> I mean, we've always been, that's our culture. We've <laughs> always been able to meet our needs. Um, right. People don't step in the way. No, we've when people don't step people in the way. Kids. When people yeah. don't step in the way. And I think that, I think that, like you say, it was those, like those things existed. And then you start to see city plans and city policies change and stuff oh man i got this book it's called urban slavery in the southwest and then i got listen my local city 
plan from 1828, 1928, this is the 1928 city plan from Austin. And then that's when they redid redlining and then and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it cut off the access, the utilities, access to utilities, access to roads, access to the things that we needed to continue to do trade and barter and continue to sustain our communities. Um, we didn't have black electrical grids. We didn't have black solar power, stuff like that. <clears throat> technology stuff like that so it crippled those freedmen's communities and a lot of them sold off to become urban uh sub suburbs and stuff like that and so that that's just those were policies that people using language and wanting financial gain and just greed just all kind of stuff infiltrated you know, those foundations for Black people that were building wealth, those Black Wall Streets within their communities. And so uh, we we just got it off. We tried to hold on to it. But trying to hold on to something when you, you were surrounded by so much hate and so much anger and so much unnecessary fear and so many things that people, you know, people wanted to kill us for, for what? you know, for, for wanting to live just like you to create, you know, that, that is crazy when all we were doing was, you know, progressing, you know, sustaining. And so now to see a circle back to that kind of stuff in these circular economies, and then we be talking about food yeah. sovereignty and food and security and, all, <laughs> and all this stuff there I'm like all it. we've been sitting up here living this experience and we've been doing this what are y'all talking about y'all been watching us drown starve die cry beg plead you know enough is enough nobody wants to do that anymore you know and i watched the jetsons growing up i can it's gonna be 2025 my my son might be inside the the game you know the oasis <laughs> ready player one type stuff i don't know but what i do know is that i don't want them to continue to have to fight this this is done and over with and it's done and over with because y'all apologized for slavery here in austin texas y'all done told us sorry y'all tell us y'all gonna give us restitution all over the country y'all done said apparently we apologized by making it known that we was free on this federal holiday you know so don't give us blanket statements give to me what's going to allow me to make a change in my community for my kids my family my cousins my sisters my friends and they gonna do the same and we're gonna take care of ourselves like we was doing when y'all freaking free freed us in the first place you know what i'm saying do it this time this time do it without the hate this time do it without the violence the abuse the mental and emotional trauma this time do it and leave us alone and let us do what it is we know we can do and what we've been doing ain't nobody got time for that i ain't got no more time for that <laughs> definitely definitely um so Oh man, you you just said if anybody no. got any questions? We can take yeah, those. I'm a, I'm a, while we talk, I'm gonna just play some of this <laughs> stuff in the background so y'all can see how it's changed over time. The Juneteenth, this is 1990. We just watched 1976. Yeah, the parade. Yeah, it's a, look, it's a whole giant week. <laughs> look, it looks totally different. <laughs> <laughs> That's the 90s. I remember the biker shorts. Look, yeah. <laughs> And the fanny packs, man. Listen, man, bring it back. Listen, yep. and you know they want to talk about you know taking it over. Oh no, y'all can't take nothing. They can't take nothing from me because I'm at they next. I'm at they throw. So I'm like, look, I brought I brought my receipts, sirs, city council, <laughs> local mayor, lady. <laughs> man. Um. So yeah, I, let, let's because we got about twelve more minutes. Let's shift gears to like you as an activist um and a form activist and the work you do in austin and we, we well, see hey first of all, <laughs> say this like i'm gonna tell you she 
It's real. She's a real one. I was like, oh, so listen, she came to my defense on social media. I was going going at it. And she was like, hey, y'all, where the rest of y'all at? Look. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, sister, real one. I got her forever. And of course, every time she's she she's going live, she's always supporting the merchandise. Um yeah. the uh, food revolution line. Um I don't got nothing on. I want listen. I should have worn me shirt. either. You know what? And and look, I don't got on that one, but I wore this one. The no go along, get along game. Oh man, that's is that, that right here? Is that yours? No, this oh. Kwame is. I bought it. I supported the movement. So I can <laughs> go along, get along. Absolutely, absolutely. Because we tired of it. We don't want to go along to get along with y'all no more. We want y'all to recognize and get on the right side of the work so we can move forward. You know, everybody <laughs> has to do right. In these last 10 minutes, I want to talk about like your activism in, in Austin and, and what it means to authentically be for community and 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 not like because I know in St. Louis, man, we've seen people who say they're for us sell us out a lot of times. And so one of the things that I committed was always lifting voice of community and committing to to even if it's not what I want, um, doing what community wants. Um, so yeah, I just want you to talk a little bit about your activism in, in these last 10 minutes uh, in Austin and the work you do around act, uh, food justice. Um, so the work I do around food justice, so first of all, it was an accident. I call myself an accidental advocate because there were no bad <laughs> farmers here. It was no, I was like, what's happening? So I had to speak for myself. And I, when I started speaking, I spoke loudly. Um, and people just happen to hear. So I became an advocate. And I have other friends that are advocates here. You know, my friend Lisa Boyd over at Rooted in Melanin. Shout out Rooted in Melanin. I see y'all keep Shout pushing. Out. We <laughs> out here. <laughs> um, and so now we're growing this space, you know, individually together, though, as advocates in the space. Um, but for me, it's the history. See, that's why I say everybody got their own lane. You know, they're more, they're going to teach you. They're about educating on growing. I could be doing the same thing, you know, but for me, my passion is the history and, and knowing the history of black farming, the history of black agriculture. What mm -hmm. were these families doing, you know, so I'm a his, I like to preserve history. We need to be preserving our history because it matters, especially right now in these times. Because people gonna want to come see this stuff. They gonna want to go and visit and be like, "Ooh, here's you know where the black farms at? Where the black farmers at?" It's like recreating the green book for but for black history and black agriculture. You know what I'm saying? We gotta be in there. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, and I got one of those too. I got a green book in my house. Uh, oh. Chime but in that, the, the the food map on um check out black uh uh blackfoodjustice.org for the food map of, of black farmers nationwide. yes yes um definitely chime in with that and so that that is my part of the advocacy that's the work that I do and my goal is to create um a black heritage farm that has about 20 acres where we can create a black library, a black museum that's dedicated to black farmers, black agriculture, mm -hmm. um, and bring in the kids to rebuild the 4-H programs, um, get them involved in livestock competition, um, growing food, aquaponics, hydroponics, you know, everything, bring in the technology and even using gaming and coding as a way to teach farming. Um, Cause I sim, I'm a gamer. So I like to play the sims and I'll be having my farm <laughs> plots and stuff. And then it'd be drama going on. And then <laughs> I like to- <laughs> I know the sims, Matt, come on. Okay? Yes, it'd be, that, it'd be going down. And I'm gonna start, look, I'm gonna start playing it more often and bringing that into the fold just to like maybe sit and talk and play the game and just like have conversations with people but yeah doing that and stardew valley pc games and just using that to educate the kids and just bringing all of those things together um and so right now i've really been kind of scaling back because we're moving um we're actually moving to my farm so i was uh <clears throat> leasing the property and i live 
further in North Austin, but the farm is in Northeast Austin. And so now we're going to be moving to the property. So I kind of shut everything down. Like y'all, I had a crazy messed up year. I had so many losses in my family at the end of last year. Then me and my family were in a car accident. Then the winter storm came. Like, so I'm just now getting back to like not dealing with my back and shoulder with farming and just like, it's like, it was rough. It was real rough, but we still ticking and kicking. So what I've been doing is scaling back the farming and everything to prepare for the move. Um, and instead just kind of linking up with other farmers who can help fill the gaps because I'm only on a, a acre or so um, who can help me fill my gaps and just build back up my production um, and just keep putting out the information about healthy foods and healthy eating and like connecting with black growers and stuff like that. Um, but I, I have been looking into a situation that's really is a very interesting case of a friend of mine who lost his son. Um, he was a young man, rising star football player going to UT from Smithfield, Texas. Um, his name was Choli. And so this is a very, very sensitive case and it's very interesting to me. So I've been looking at that while I kind of take a break from the food advocacy um, because something like this is so important to know that racism is within our police system so bad to where we can't even get proper investigations. You know, we can't even get the respect of a parent knowing what happens when they lose a child, no matter how they lost that child. Um, and so I've been just kind of looking at that. I'm going to put out some information and working with some friends. But I mean, other than that, I've just been kind of keeping low, you know, because I was popping off. Early. I know, man. <laughs> so I was, hey. Hey, I think we was both popping off at the same time because, like, I don't think people <laughs> understand, like, you in cities like ours, um, and people be activists and they, oh, food, just what? Not, yeah, like, that's the basis, you know, that's the basis is, of activism is that's. And they don't understand. It's like, they like, what is that food? There's this, we didn't know that it did. So it hurts me. It makes me feel sad to know that maybe our people didn't, didn't, don't see the value in food. So we have to figure out how to come back to showing them that there's a value in food for us. Value, food was how we traded. Food was how we came together, sitting down at the table. You know, you might not grow onions. You might not have hogs. Everybody don't eat that anyway. Some of us is vegans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some of us are vegans. You know, some of us are vegans. So we have family dynamics and community that have different knowledge that we all can benefit from. And we have to figure out how to get back there. And the only way for us to get back there is to <laughs> demand that when stuff like this happens, Juneteenth, that it's, it benefits us period ain't no more you know we waiting now nah, okay y'all don't want to give us a hate crime bill y'all want to give us juneteenth well look why you gotta pay me because juneteenth <laughs> says this y'all yep. played on us hey. y'all played on me yes. y'all can be mad and hate we'll figure out that later but today <laughs> like <laughs> i gotta really come up off <laughs> you gotta come up off it right. you know so all right, well, so, yeah. we got to our last two minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Anybody got any questions that's in the Zoom right now or like in the chat? I think there was some in the chat. Facebook, I don't think it's nothing. Yeah, nothing. we don't want no stimulus checks. Forget that. All right. right. Somebody said, yeah, <laughs> there's my issue. This is my stimulus check. So let, let the people know how they can follow you. Um, um all the actions and um tell them how they can support you financially um so yeah y'all can uh venmo me at farmer nancy or you can cash at me at uh money sign farmer nancy venmo or cash app um if you want to donate i gotta go fund me um but you can find me on link tree to farming it out listen all my at symbols is at nancy farm fancy that's gmail nancy farm fancy at gmail.com that's instagram twitter and follow me
me on YouTube, y'all. I want everybody to go follow my YouTube <laughs> channel. Because <laughs> while I'm on YouTube, though, I'm about to be in the house minding my business, you know, on YouTube, playing my video games and, you know, just talking <laughs> to the people taking some phone calls over the live and just having conversations with people because it's about to be hot <laughs> already there. listen i know it's hot in texas and for evolve um you can follow us um on all social media platforms is uh at symbol 314 evolve um tune into our co-founder um kelly mcgowan as she does straight facts talking about and breaking down local politics and stay tuned um i guess for me because i'm gonna be on this social media thing <laughs> even though yeah. I want to. <laughs> so um are you very welcome tiffany um and thank you. yeah thank uh, you thank you for your time that's another tiffany man i've been meeting all these tiffany's listen um but uh thank y'all for tuning in and we'll see y'all next time the next host will be um the, her, uh, uh, a student in south uh i want to say southern illinois university we're going to be talking about um missouri and, and we're going to bring it home to st louis and, and missouri and and the treatment of black farmers hey all right y'all next time thank y'all so much all right uh, thank you.